How often do you see lamb on a menu, but people will hesitate to make lamb at home? Well, today we're gonna to make lamb chops, and it's a very simple recipe. Actually, the magic is in the sauce. So today, we are making pan-seared lamb chops with a lamb, jus, or sauce. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a big thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss a video. Now, let's start cooking. So there's just nothing simpler than pan searing lamb chops. The magic though is in the sauce. And usually you see lamb with a mint sauce or some other kind of sauce. Today we're just making a simple lamb jus. And a jus is a, is a sauce that usually accompany, accompanies roasted meats made from that same meat. So today we are actually going to use some lamb chops that have been untrimmed and we're going to use the trimmings to make that jus or sauce. So we've got our lamb chops and we're going to trim those up in a second. But then we're going to concentrate on the jus because that's really where the magic is. And so for our jus today, we're going to use the, the trimmings from the lamb. We're going to sear those trimmings and then we're going to add a mirepoix or a collection of uh, vegetables that have been chopped up to uh, be the basis of our jus or sauce. And that's simply onions, carrots and celery. And yes, we're gonna use a little bit of the celery leaf as well, but we've got some celery chopped up. And then we've got a couple of garlic cloves. And uh, with that, we're going to make a bouquet garni, which is just, we've got some rosemary, we've got some thyme, I've got a, a bay leaf and some parsley. We're just gonna wrap all that up in some uh, cheesecloth, and we're just gonna use that to flavor our sauce. And then once we sear our trimmings, we're gonna deglaze the pan with some red wine. And I've just got a dry red wine here. I think it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. And it's, it only takes, you know, a cup, you know, a half a cup. And uh, then we are going to uh, add some, some veal broth to that. Or in this case, I've got actually some, some veal demi-glace that we'll add to that with some water and a little bit of butter and that will make our sauce. So let's get going. To start, let's make our bouquet garni. And to do that, we're just going to put our herbs in some cheesecloth. Now you could use cheesecloth, you could use some leek leaves, you can use really whatever you want to do this. So to, to accomplish this, I'm just gonna put my, I've got some kitchen twine here and I'm just gonna roll this up in the cheesecloth, just like that. And I could just tie it off onto itself, or I can just do something like this. Just bring the string down, and I've got another piece from the top here, and we'll just tie that. And that is going to go in our pan to help flavor our sauce. A lot of times when you buy lamb chops in the store, they have already been trimmed and they have been what's called Frenched. And to, to, to French a lamb chop, we are just going to, it's, it's really easier to do this when they are all on the rack. So, you know, when you originally get, when lamb chops come this way, they come in a rack, just like that. And it's all connected. And generally what you do is you uh, trim this all at once. but Today, I purchased them and they've already been separated. They've already been cut into chops. And so I'm just going to French them individually. The, the best way to do this is that uh, lamb chops usually come with, you've got the actual chop itself, and there's usually a layer of fat with a little bitty layer of, of meat underneath. That is what we're going to use for our jus. So we're going to trim this from the lamb and then we are just gonna to come to this section right after the main part of the, the chop. There's another little section here and we are going to cut right there. We're gonna make a cut just all around the bone. And again, this is easier to do when the rack is all one piece. 
So now we've made our cut. We're going to use our, our knife to come down and look at my, my hand grip here because this is what helps you to really get the, the cut that you want. We're putting the point of our knife right in the center of that bone, just like that. And we're just going to come straight down the bone. And now we're just going to slide our knife on either side of the bone, just like so. And now that we've got that, that's really its silver skin. Now that we've got that removed, we can use the back of our blade to force the meat off the bone. Just like that. And this gives you a nice clean bone. And beautiful, beautiful Frenched lamb chop. So once we have all of our trimmings taken off, what I want to do is we're just going to, we're going to leave the bones there because there's flavor in those bones. I'm just going to cut these trimmings up small so that when we are searing them, we want to get a nice sear all around these trimmings because that's where the flavor is. And the more surface area you have or that's exposed, the better the more flavor you're going to get out of these. So I'm going to leave the bones in, but I'm taking the meat off and I'm just cutting it into smaller pieces. And now once we've got everything trimmed, all we need to do is to season our lamb. And we're just doing a very simple salt and pepper seasoning on these today. So on these lamb chops. And once we do this part, we won't touch these lamb chops almost until we're ready to eat. Salt, add salt, and some fresh ground black pepper. And we'll do that on both sides. And then we'll start our jus. To begin our jus, we're gonna add some of the trimmed meat to a pan. Now I've added a little bit of oil to this pan just to get get everything going, but there's plenty of fat as you can see on this limb, which which will be taken out by the way. So we're just using that to get the process started. And then all of this fat will be removed. So don't worry, we're not going for a fatty sauce. To the contrary, we're going for quite a lean sauce. But we, we want to get a really nice sear on this meat. So we're putting the meat in and we are not going to touch it for probably a good four minutes or so. And then we'll turn it and we'll just let it get uh, brown all over. Our trimmings have been going for about five minutes now. So now we'll just turn them over. And, you know, we haven't seasoned anything yet. So we're just going to turn these and what we want is that we want to get this nice browning going on here and as you can see really we could we could leave it a little bit longer but we're just going to turn it and we're just going to let it get start get starting to to brown all over can you see all of that fat that has been released and has has uh, rendered from this lamb so now this is a crucial step in our process. We are going to drain this. We're going to drain the fat and remove the meat from the pan. Just like that. But every, all of the stuff that's in the bottom of the pan, we want to leave that. That is very, very important for the flavor that we're going for. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit and we're just going to add, I'm probably going to add about half a tablespoon of butter because now what we're going to do is put in our, our mirepoix or our vegetables and we are going to sweat them, which means we're going to cook them on medium to medium low temperature until they are nice and soft and translucent and so I'm going to turn my heat back up now and to medium 
I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Anytime we are sweating vegetables, we want to help that process along by adding a little salt. It helps to release the moisture from the vegetables and develops some incredible flavor. So now we will let these vegetables cook for probably five to seven minutes until they're nice and soft and translucent. And we'll go to our next step. You may have noticed I haven't peeled the garlic. There's really no need to peel the garlic. You could crush it, but all of this is going to be trimmed out in the end. So uh, there's really no, no reason to do that. And you just wanna stir these around every minute or so just to make sure nothing is, is burning or anything. Okay, our vegetables are nice and soft. And now what we're going to do is deglaze our pan. And again, I'm using, I don't know, three quarters of a cup of, of, of red wine here. And we are going to let this wine cook. I'm gonna turn my heat up to very high because we want this wine to reduce by, by probably till it's almost dry really. We want to cook the alcohol out but leave the incredible depth of flavor that this wine will help to, uh, to bring out. So we're going to bring that to the boil and then we're going to let it cook for probably five minutes or so until the alcohol is gone and the wine has reduced by a lot. Our wine is reduced by probably three-fourths now so that's, this is what we want, that's the look we want. I said dry, just almost dry. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and add about the same quantity of water that we added in wine. So we wanna, again, bring this back to the boil and we wanna just let this reduce by about half. So I'm just adding a little bit more water. I added about a cup and a half of water because I want the water to pretty much come up to the, the same height as the vegetables. And now I'm gonna go ahead and, and toss in my bouquet garni. And we're gonna bring this to the boil and let it reduce probably by about half. And then we will add our veal glass. Our water is reduced. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our veal glass. And let me just say a, a word about this veal glass. Veal glass is something that you you will probably have to purchase at a specialty store. Um, you can certainly make it. It's a very, very, very long and arduous process, but um, it gives you a consistency and a flavor that you can't get otherwise. And Ville Glass serves really a couple of different purposes. One is to, uh, to of course, flavor your sauce, but it also helps to thicken your sauce. So that is the, the main reason that we use veal glass. Now, if you don't have veal glass, you can certainly still do the same thing. As a matter of fact, you could deglaze your pan with wine if you want to use wine. You don't have to use the wine. You could literally just deglaze your pan with, with water and then add the stock, or you could deglaze the pan with some beef stock. But this is just something to just increase the flavor and just really deepen the flavor. So what we're going to do now is I'm looking for, I'm starting to look now for texture. And so as this thickens, I'm just going to, I'm going to cook this for probably another five minutes or so. And then we are going to strain this sauce out and, and we're going to put it into another pan and we'll let it simmer until it, it thickens and gets to the consistency that we want. Okay, so this is the fun part. We are getting to the point where our sauce is thickening up. And so now we're going to strain it into another pot, to a smaller pot. And we want to we're not gonna press down on this. We, we don't want any kind of impurities getting into that. We're just going to hit the side of our strainer to get all of the juice and all of the, all of the flavor out of, these, out of these vegetables. And now what we'll do is we will put this on over a low heat and we will just simmer this and look at the, look at the color of that. It's just beautiful color and it's got a nice, and it's gonna have a really, really nice sheen to it. 
when it finishes. So we're, we're not there yet, but once this simmers for probably a good 15 minutes, we'll be where we want. Our sauce is getting to the consistency we want. That is it. That's what we want right there. We are very, very close. So um, what we'll do now is I'm going, I'm going, is going to, we're going to season this sauce because at the very last, we're going to add just a little bit of butter to it. And, uh, but we want to season it with salt and freshly ground black pepper. And this, is an, this next step is an extra step that I like to take. You don't have to take it, but what I want to do is season it and then we'll taste it for seasoning. It's very close. So add just a little bit of salt to that. And now that we have seasoned it, what I would like to do is we are actually going to strain this again into another smaller, smaller pan because I really want a very nice clear sauce without any lumps, without any, any black pepper or anything like that. So we're just going to strain that then into another, another pan. And you can see, you can see a little of the residual there. So we're gonna strain that. And now we are just going to let this simmer, bring it to it, let it, let it simmer for a second. And then at the very end, We'll finish it with a little bit of butter. And so we're, while we are finishing our sauce, we've got our cast iron skillet heating for our, for our lamb chops. So this sauce back here, we just want that to simmer that gently. And once it starts simmering, we'll start adding our, our butter to it. And uh, this is the point at which you never want to boil your sauce again, because if you boil your sauce after you've added butter, it's going to split and it's, it's going to not have the consistency you want. It's going to look like a greasy sauce. So now that our, our pan is getting, getting hot, I'm just going to add some grapeseed oil to our pan. Just a little bit. Doesn't, we don't need much. And we're using grapeseed oil because we're going to sear this at a pretty high temperature and grapeseed oil has a higher smoke point than, say, olive oil. And uh, once this starts simmering, now I'm just going to start adding my butter and we're just going to add the butter and, and uh, whisk that in a little bit at a time. And once the butter starts melting and incorporating into the sauce, we'll add another one. And that probably is going to be all the butter we, we need for this. And what we'll do is, is taste it again. And let me mention that, you know, if you don't have veal glass or if you don't want, want to go to the trouble of using veal glass, you can certainly, you know, thicken your sauce with a, uh, a slurry of cornstarch and water. That works uh, just as well. It's, it's just not going to have the flavor of a, of a sauce that's been uh, finished with a, with a veal glass. So now let's taste our sauce. It is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. And, and you, you just can't, you just have to see the, the, the quality of this, of this sauce. Look how nice and beautiful that is. It's nice and shiny. And that sauce is finished. So we are just going to turn it off and I'm just going to cover it up and let it, let it sit while we finish our, our chops. So we're just going to cover it up and let it, let it sit. In fact, I'm just going to leave it open just a little bit so that the steam can escape. And now our pan is smoking. And we will just put our lamb chops in. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it from the beginning, but lamb chops uh, cook very quickly because you don't want to, you don't, you only want to cook these to medium rare. You don't want to cook them to well done. So we've put our lamb in. And we're just letting them sit there. And I'm going to press down a little bit just to make sure we get nice, 
browning and caramelization all over. And let's check and see. Yep. Let's press it down just a little bit more. We want to we want to make sure we get them nice and caramelized. This one is smaller, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it. Very nice. And this one. That is what we want. Beautiful. Okay. They'll be ready to plate in just a second. Okay, so we've gone ahead and taken these out because we don't want them to overcook. And now I'm just going to tint these with some foil and because they will continue to cook for a little bit while we prepare our plate. Our seared lamb chops are done and my goodness, do they look amazing. So we've got our lamb chops, we've got our jus uh, that's over the top. You know, serving this with a little bit of sweet potato puree, which by the way, if you want to see a video on that, just check above and you can check that out. Got some homemade potato chips here and a little bit of salad and some blanched fresh spring peas. Let's give it a taste. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Mm. Such incredible flavor. You just think something this simple can't be that good, but the jus is really the thing. I mean, the, the lamb by itself is fantastic, but adding to that, the deep flavor from that jus is just, uh, just takes it up a whole nother level. Mm. Well, if you haven't decided what you're making for Easter this year, here's a suggestion. Thanks for watching today. We really appreciate it. If you have a chance, Leave us a comment in the bottom. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you might want to see, or if you decide to make this meal, just leave me a comment and let me know uh, what's going on. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and do not forget to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified anytime we release a new video.